さてと命も助けてあげたことだしお願いが一つあるんだけどな。After we somehow slipped through the front lines, I began negotiating with Sin, that is, with,、uh, that is Andras. Now, you're not the Sin, right? Ah! Demsan から直々に任命された選ばれた役職さ Now that we're on the topic of his, positions as Sin, his, his position as Sin, he's suddenly starting to act like he's a, like he's a big shot. Hey, 直々に任命されるほど仲いいんだ仲がいいっていうか Now he's all flushed and embarrassed. 他のドローよりレムちゃんに近いのは確かだな。なんてったって俺はレムちゃんから重大な任務を受けたんだから。今回は重要な使命なのよ。なんて言ってさ。そんな特別な任務を俺に任せるだなんて困っちゃうな。それで今回の使命ってのがまた難しくてさ、太陽と月が一緒になるだなんて、一体どういうことなのかわかんなくて、それで。アンドラス begins rambling about his mission from レムちゃん。It's annoying, so let's just ignore him. ふーん。そんなにレムちゃんと親しいんだったらさ、あたしをレムちゃんの入罪に合わせてよ。え聞こえなかった私はレムちゃんのユーザーとお友達になりたいの。無理そんな大それたことはできっこない俺たちは、ただレムちゃんからの命令を忠実に守るだけだし。アンドラス drops his former cocky demeanor and starts panicking. 守るだけあんたには自分の意志ってものがないの意志も何も、真に与えられる権限は使命を受けることと、それを執行することだけなんだ。使命を受けるときだって、リアルに顔が見れるわけじゃないし、だから俺も見たことないし。アンドラス seems quite interested in what レムちゃん's user looks like as well. Let's try goading him a little. はーん、育児がないんだ。なんだってレムちゃんのユーザーは、極めて優れたプログラマよ。おそらく、いい毒の中でも随一の。私は絶対に会ってみたい。いや、それは俺だって。アンドラスターツマムリングアゲン。Oh, come on, this is irritating. 協力しないんだったら、もし私が会えたとしても、あんたには絶対に引き合わせてやらないんだからね。えぇ、ー、そんなやるのやらないのいや、やりますです。With just a little nudging on my part, Andras begins to nod eagerly. おかしいななんでこんな新参者の女に俺様がいいように牛耳られなきゃならないんだなんか文句あるい、いえ、何も。Maybe I said too much. I kind of pity Andras too, so I try to give him a smile. 二人で一緒にエレムちゃんのユーザーに会いましょう。お、おうでもまたデモなのいやレムちゃんって2種類いるんだなんとなく言いたいことはわかるんだけど Oddly enough I've come to the same conclusion as well but just what does it mean? 2種類のレムちゃんって具体的にどういう意味そのまんまさ2つの人格があるネット人格とリアル人格の違いみたいなものあんたもネットとリアルとじゃ全然性格違うみたいだけどなな,なななな何を言ってるんだ俺はリアルもネットもこのままで<笑>照れない照れない愛しなんてみんなそんなもんだから Let's not get distracted too much by teasing Andras Time to get back on topic で実際のところどうなのいや、レムちゃんはそんなんじゃない。多重人格それも違う。じゃあ何よ。At the edge of my patience, I press Andras to talk and finally get my answer. レムちゃんは二人いるんだよ
true. If there are two personalities, then logically speaking, that would be the normal conclusion to come to, but... Great, that narrows things down. Or so I thought, but that plane's been shot down before takeoff. I can't help but smack him upside the head. When he hears that, Andras starts rubbing the spot I hit with a happy sort of bewildered look on his face. Huh? Hmm. I see what's going on. This guy's not used to having girls needing him. Exploitable. <laughs> Bingo! Just throw the dog a bone and you'll have him on a, on a leash in no time. But what exactly is this something he's going to do? I'm tempted to throw in his the straight man retort, but there's nothing to be gained from chipping away at this guy's morale, so let's leave it at that. Andras leaves with his head held up high. Let's just hope that morale will result in something good. I take a quick glance around my surroundings at my surroundings and see a worrying silhouette off in the distance. It's Aya. Not good. Aya might be in cahoots with Enlil. It would be prudent to leave with caution, but Naturally, she finds me immediately. <laughs> I keep my guard up, reach for my hip holster, and grip the P7, but Ea sh <coughs> shows no response. Nothing but a gaze with those silent, cold eyes of hers. <laughs> An emotionless voice responds to my question. <laughs> あなたが何をしようと関与しません。それは助かるわ。そろそろエンリルさんも退場していただこうと思っていたことですし。え？エア and Enlil aren't cooperating. それってどういう？ Right before I can finish asking, I notice that Ea is carrying something, a crystal ball, most likely an exabyte crystal. Something squirming inside. Curiosity gets the better of me, so so I stare in it to see. Magdalene. I instinctively reach for the crystal that is holding. Eh? Why? What's the meaning of this? Huh? But why do I get the feeling I've seen this situation before? My memory is fuzzy and somewhat disordered. Magdalene looks straight into my face. She appears to be shivering slightly, perhaps due to the despair of captivity. <laughs> She suddenly screams in fury. She seemed to have witnessed that discussion I had with Andras. Crap, this could become a nuisance. This form of mine is an imitation of Onesama's. I unconsciously try to cover my body with my arms, but realize it's a futile attempt.
Magdalene keeps shooting cold accusation after cold accusation towards me. I can't help but step back from her threatening attitude. This emotional behavior is so uncharacteristic of Magdalene that it's bewildering. She would never act like this no matter how upset she'd get. Oh, of course, this Magdalene is a Shadow Null, an online transcription of her memories uploaded through Babylon's IO system. <laughs> Magdalene's eyes suddenly widen as she points to my chest. At the end of her gaze shines Onesama's rosary. <laughs> a harsh glare, a gaze of killing intent. I freeze in place like a frog cornered by a snake. なんで、なんであなたなの前それに、あなたには先輩のロザリオがついているもの。私と違ってメガネもかけてないし。メガネ。Her words are becoming more and more nonsensical. It doesn't look like even she's sure about what she herself is saying. There's none of that none of the logical composed Magdalene we knew and loved. She's as hysterical as a woman whose lover has been stolen. No, I can almost see the flames of jealousy burning behind her. Have I really done something to warrant that much fury? Eventually, Magdalene ends her shouting. Looks like she's calmed down. Her eyes remain glued, though. That voice brings me back to my senses. Standing standing before me is the ever emotionless Aya. Without waiting for an answer, Aya leaves with the exabyte crystal in hand, Magdalene still inside. In the end, Magdalene's shadow just blew off steam without me doing anything about it. But still, it was a strange experience. Do people just leave behind intense emotions once they pass away? Or was that due to her unnatural death? Either way, aside from these emotions, she definitely was Magdalene, in appearance, in voice, in patterns of thought. Can mere programs really be that human? This feels like a concept beyond human comprehension. I feel as if someone unknown to us is pulling the strings behind our backs. I feel fear as if I had just met a ghost. When I turn around, I see a small insect buzzing nearby. Probably a drone. I let it be. When I come to my senses, I return to the hideout. I sink my body deep into the sofa and stare blankly at the ceiling. Just a short while ago, a bloody battle was unfolding before my eyes, but now my surroundings are quiet as if that were all fake. When I'm alone like this, I become self-conscious that I'm Hinata. During the fighting, he controlled this body via his overwhelming power, while to me, it felt like a daydream. I mutter this, not really asking anyone. Right now, I can no longer feel any of that nauseating buildup of pressure in my stomach. It feels like I've changed the channel on a TV. Maybe I was just watching a movie or something. 
It's similar to the symptoms I've been suffering for a while up until now. But when my gaze drops to the wound on my flank, the one he created to shoot the enemy behind him, I realize that it's merely escapism. My mind just doesn't want to accept it as reality. My body has been used to cruelly shoot people, tear up their bodies, s s uh, shatter them, and continuously slaughter with the same ease as plowing down a sand hill. All those things happened in cyberspace, but those people were linked to it via their biocomputers. It was definitely painful for them, completely different from a game. I thought I was prepared for this, and yet when I was at the actual scene of the battle, I was tormented by the feeling that my heart had been torn up and thrown away. There's now a giant scar on my right flank, though it's more of a hole than a scar. Under normal circumstances, this would be a serious wound. Despite that, there's not a single drop of blood flowing from it, and to top it off, I don't even feel any pain. I remember the scene of me receiving this wound, and how lubricant oil poured out instead of blood, how sparks shot out. I feel self-conscious again, a being who's more affiliated with cyberspace than this world than this world. This body is already two-thirds machine. Is that the reason why he's found it easy to operate me? Yeah, I... I was wondering. That's right, there's no doubt about it. He's battle with the Codebreakers took place on the net, in a section of Babylon. So no matter how much a shadow is wounded, those wounds are nothing more than virtual. So my own body shouldn't... shouldn't be damaged. I try asking he who's inside me, but he doesn't answer, denying me any relief of calming down these violent emotions. <laughs> It feels like I'm having a nightmare. The continuation of a really bad one. I lie down on the bed and repair my damaged body. No matter what happened, I can't keep spacing out forever. I don't have that kind of time. There's lots of things that I have to do. Though I call it repair, it's not easy for me due to my lack of knowledge or skills in this field. The best I can do is replace parts for new ones. If I had known it would come to this, then I should have brought some spare parts from Nergal. However, the damage this time isn't bad enough that I can't do it on my own. But if it gets really bad, I need to go to the right kind of clinic for treatment. And as far as I know, the only one with the skill and trust that I can rely on to do it is Nergal. That money grubber would no doubt ask for a ridiculous sum in exchange. <laughs> Oh brother, why am I thinking about something so stupid? It seems I'll need to give he detailed instructions to not push himself too far. Come to think of it, I suddenly remember something. Someone was watching me during the battle with the codebreakers from the shadows, right? I definitely remember he's sensors picking it up. It feels like it was a girl. Was she not part of Code's crew? There was a drone flying around on the battlefield. Was that her doing? Since he didn't lay a hand on her, she might be completely uninvolved, but... <sighs> I'm not really satisfied by that conclusion. It might be because the girl I caught a glimpse of makes me feel something like a mysterious stirring in my, in my emotions. Like a knock on some old memories. Perhaps she's someone I know? Or maybe he knows her? Hmm, actually they both know her, come to think of it. The reason why is because we were in Babylon at that time. In other words, that woman's form was not a, that of her real body, but her shadows. That person might not even be a woman. As long as I don't have more information about their personality, or unless they themselves tell me their name, I can't figure that out. No, even so, that might be difficult to discern. The reason being that when I turn into he, he looks at reality via cyberspace. 
because he looks at others as a shadow, not as something with substance. Just how, so just how like, cyberspace continues to be a make-believe existence to us, real space feels like a fictional existence that doesn't actually exist to him. The world will change greatly depending on which side I belong to at that time. I've asked myself that question so many times that I've lost count. But the true meaning of the question has changed a little. I stop moving my hands and stare at them. My flesh and blood right hand and my mechanical left hand. Where am I? In the first place, what is he? As a flesh and blood human, his reactions on the net are unusual. On the other hand, as a program, his presence is so, so overwhelming. Even as I think about this question, he continues to remain as silent as always, not replying with a single comment. There's just too much I don't know. I stand up from the bed and begin walking over to the window. I can see the sky from outside the window. Thick, heavy clouds rule the sky. It's like a painting with too many layers of paints overlapping each other. I can't see the moon. Even if the sky were clear, it's the middle of the day, so of course I wouldn't be able to see the moon. Um, really? If that were the past me, I'd probably think that right away. <laughs> but the current me is different. He embodies my desire to save Mutsuki. I open and close my hands alter al alternately. My remaining right and my lost left. My left brain controls my sense of reason and my right hand. My right brain controls my emotions and my left hand. No matter how they change, they're my own hands. I will save my sister. And then I will properly tell her the words I've never been able to say for these past few years. A giant bug is hovering outside the window. It's another drone. Its ultra-small cameras are turned this way, no doubt observing me. I don't knock it away or even shut the curtains. I just glare at it. Even if the sun is shining, the moon is there. It definitely exists. My mind's eye is grasping the moon. Because that's exactly what I need. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop. Oh, wait, um... Huh, there's no date. Yeah, um... Uh, I was gonna do this at the start of the session, but I forgot. Um... So... I guess I'll do it now. Um, yeah, I, I figured out how to, I think, I figured out how to get the bad ending on Route A, so I'm going to go for that now. <laughs>